So welcome to this session, which is going to be about adding DVB, so digital video broadcast, uh, TV and radio to AOSP TV. So why would we want to do that when pretty much everyone is moving to uh, streaming video over the network? One thing is that the DVB is still offering a lot of free-to-air channels that people who aren't willing to pay for, uh, for uh, streaming services ca uh, can use. For example, the Astro TV satellite, which is available uh, all over Europe, transmits over 800 free-to-air TV channels and an equal number of uh, radio channels. Mm, it is unlikely to go away uh, just because of that. Mm. In many countries, DVB-T and DVB-T2 are the official transmission standard of public TV and radio channels. Those are not going to go away. In, in some uh, contexts, they are really important, like uh, providing em emergency information. So we would want to see them supported in any box as well. And there's still a couple of regions on the planet where internet access just doesn't work or is too slow for streaming use. And they, uh, even there, uh, one of the DVB methods usually works. So how do we want to do it? Currently, AOSP and Android don't have a standardized way to access uh, DVB devices or even analog TV devices. Everyone who does it in a set-top box has to do it from scratch. N in the regular Linux world, there, uh, there is a uh, pretty much agreed upon standard which is using libdvb v5. But libdvb v5 is uh, part of v4l utils, which is released under the GPL version 3, which I personally like and which isn't a problem for us, but uh, it will never be accepted in AOSP upstream because of that license. So we couldn't just use that and uh, had to start over uh, doing something from scratch that would be under a more acceptable to AOSP license. So the only thing we could build on is the kernel interface to DVB, interfa uh, to DVB devices. And we've created a new wrapper library on top of that. So if we have to start from scratch anyway, Maybe there's a couple of things we can do better, uh, or maybe there's a couple of things we can at least do better for our particular use case. Some things in DVB pretty much call for generic code, like there's uh, hundreds of different types of tables that are transmitted over DVB. They're all in the same format. Uh, and, uh, they only differ by uh, what data is in between. It's uh, one of the things that pr uh, template code in C++ can really help with, as opposed to the pure C libdvb v5. So instead of uh, just re-implementing libdvb v5, we've decided to go with, uh, with a C++ library that provides a more readable API that should hopefully be uh, more understandable to newcomers to the DVB world as well. Mm. Another thing we, uh, we've paid attention to is the, uh, that given we are not just re-implementing libdvb v5, maybe this library should be useful to the regular Linux world as well. So the library itself doesn't contain any AOSP-isms. But of course, the interfaces to the library are open to stuff like binderizing it. Uh, so any AOSP specific bits we want in there can go in there as an optional part. But we also do uh, accessing over the, uh, TCP sockets, over Unix sockets, and just over regular library functions, which will be available both in the AOSP world and in the regular Linux world. So to give an example of uh, what I think a readable API can look like, and this is actually uh, 
application that lives in the uh, code repository right now, so this works. We first get a list of available DVB interfaces that scans uh, for PCI and USB devices, uh, so it will see a DVB-S receiver, it will see a DVB-T uh, receiver, it will see DVB-C receivers, and you can just uh, talk to them all at the same time. And then we can iterate over the uh, interfaces or just pick one, tune it to an initial transponder, which is something you have to do at, uh, an untuned DVB receiver can't do anything. It uh, won't even find other channels because the, uh, the references to the other channels uh, live in the data on transponders. So you have to tune to some initial transponder to start doing work from there. And then the next thing is uh, we call scan transponders, which uh, searches for the other transponders. That's essentially uh, what the set-top box does uh, when you search for channels. And then we, uh, we can go over those, scan that particular transponder for, uh, for the channels that are on it. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that's needed to sc uh, scan for channels. So we just dump them on standard output and that is probably somewhat more readable than the, the 10 pages of code or so you'd uh, see in libdvbv 5 to do the same thing. Similarly, if we want to access a channel, we again uh, take the interface. So dvb interface is all is uh, like before the interface that lists all the devices. We just take the first one in this example, and we open the channel list, look for the channel we want, which we take from the command line in this particular example. We tune the device and set it up so, uh, so it filters the particular channel we want and not any of the other channels on the same transponder. And that's already all we need to do to play a channel uh, the DVR0 device in the kernel na uh, now provides exactly the data we are looking for. There's more things we can do, like set up a transponder to a filter for multiple channels at the same time. So we could, for example, watch one channel and record two others as long as they live on the same transponder. The API for that isn't completely finished, but sample code already exists and is available in the Git repository. Mm. One more thing we can do is uh, just take the data and send it to another channel. So for example, we can re uh, receive data fr uh, from a TV satellite and then st uh, stream it out over TCP IP. So I hope this little demo I've prepared will actually work. There's a couple of things that might go wrong here, mostly related to bandwidth. Let's see. Yeah, so here's a live t uh, TV stream that's coming in f uh, from my box at home using a satellite feed. Mm. I don't want to stress the bandwidth too much, but let's see if we can get another channel at the same time.
Yeah, apparently the bandwidth isn't holding up. Um, oh, actually, it is, but we are uh, we're seeing some dropouts right now because the bandwidth isn't that great. So all the bits and pieces, uh, we need to receive stuff from the uh, DVB regardless of whether it's satellite, cable, or terrestrial is there. Mm. Now this box, uh, what we've just seen uh, was streamed by, uh, by my desktop box at home. But before doing that, I've also had it working on a high key. The, um, I've switched it to a desktop box, uh, so I have a bit more control over rebooting it uh, just in case something goes wrong. There's nobody home right now. But uh, high key is good enough, and that means we can also just do it in the box itself, uh, receive the data, not send it out over the internet, but uh, just put it directly into the player. So the next step will be integrating it with the AOS PTV UI. Currently, uh, all the basic functionality is there, but, uh, but it's not yet integrated into the AOS PTV user interface. I've had a look at how the uh, integration is supposed to work, and it's fairly straightforward, so that shouldn't take much longer. There's one challenge that we are facing, which is ExoPlayer, which is the default player uh, in AOS PTV, not supporting MPEG transport streams, which MPV, VLC version 3, and FF play do. So maybe we can integrate one of those other players. But, uh, Alternatively, we'd have to uh, get the MPEG transport stream and convert it into a program stream before feeding it to AOS PTV, which is not horribly complicated, but uh, which, of course, will take a bit of time again. And as with libdvb 5 some uh, converters that take a transport stream and output a program stream exist, but they are GPL, and therefore won't be accepted by AOS P upstream. So that's something we can do for testing, but as soon as we want to upstream it, we'll have to redo that. So that's pretty much what I have uh, prepared. Are there any questions or comments or feature requests that should go into a release of the code? That was on my desktop box. Uh, like I've said, um, I've had it working on a high key before, but I've moved it over to my desktop box to, uh, just so I have a bit more control of, uh, over rebooting it uh, because I haven't been home for three weeks and I really still want this setup to be working for Demo Friday. It's probably not that much more, so, uh, so I think in a month or so we'll have it completely working.
So maybe one more small thing. Let me see. That works. Okay, we seem to have a bit of a bandwidth problem. This uh, was working before, but um, essentially it's just uh, what I was showing on the computer before. The, uh, we can also play the same stream on a uh, phone. But right now, I'm not getting the data at a sufficient speed. That I stopped. Let me see what disable sound. Uh, somewhat working. Mm. Yes. It's certainly only the bandwidth, so I hope we'll uh, have uh, better luck at uh, the uh, demo Friday, where actually one of the plans is to. Uh, show it running on a phone. Okay, anything else? I guess not, so thanks for attending. <laughs>